All right, to wrap up this little uh, discussion sec uh, stuff that we're doing here um, for the Pokemon dub, I'll be talking about the OU movies. Well, the only one that's been dubbed so far um, and the possible future for them. Uh, well, all right, so let's just get into movie 20 and like the scenario go um, surrounding it and with me and a lot of other people anticipating what it might have excelled at what it might have disappointed at and how it did end up very much disappointing um so to start off the <laughs> to start off the minute we knew it was an anniversary movie from you know the early japanese trailers you know it was it was excitement all around even when the movie came out and the review stated that wasn't very good there was still a lot of excitement um in regards to it just because it was that anniversary product it was probably something we would at least want to watch at least once um and then the, you know even more excitement came when the soundtrack came out that was some of my fondest memories absolutely in regards to movie hype because we got to you know take guesses at what would get remixed and everything and there were a lot of original series remixes um in the in uh, this movie soundtrack some which were better than the original version recordings uh, others that weren't it was for me personally like I think it was a good, you know, score um, with its strengths and weaknesses. Uh, and I, but I think it was more so its um, emotional value that I value. <laughs> emotional value that I value. That's very repetitive. I think it's very its intent and message was very much what I appreciate out of it the most because it was a celebration of 20 years of this show. Um, and there were a lot of hopes for TPCI to, at least for this movie, because it was that big 20th anniversary product, to uh, throw fans a bit of a bone, right? <laughs> because it is a history, this, uh, this movie, and especially its soundtrack more than its actual plot and characters, was a celebration of its past. And so we were hoping, like, hey, you know, like uh, maybe we're actually going to get mm, at least the nostalgic tracks kept in. Um, because we weren't really expecting a completely 100% Japanese score to be kept. That is kind of out of the question at this point. Um, but yeah, no. So as time went on and more rumors about the dub started to surface, we actually heard that there was a fair amount of the Japanese music kept in. So we let our expectations get up, right? And a lot of us were going to go see it in the theaters because this was a big deal with Fathom events and everything. Um, of course, TPCI being TPCI, they weren't offering the subtitled version, which, again, in this day and age for such a big franchise, especially through Fathom Events, because they offer subtitled versions for their other projects. Um, yeah, no, it was... <laughs> it, it, there was some hype leading up to it. And for the visuals alone, absolutely, like the movie experience is worth it. But they kept one track. <laughs> It was so disheartening, like even more disheartening than the whole XY debacle and everything um, in regards to the previews, because they kept one track out of a movie that wasn't already very nostalgic. They took out the biggest components that was nostalgic to it, regardless of how you felt about how the score itself was here or there. It had that nostalgic value that the dub score couldn't even live up to. I feel like the complete replacement of most of the tracks could have been forgiven if there was like remix for kids music in this dub score. But there was, there was barely anything like that. No, there was only like tiny sprinkles of the English dub Pokemon theme being remixed into an instrumental, like piano versions here or there. But other than that, no, there was nothing. The, the film had lost a big component of its nostalgic factor um, for an anniversary film, which I think is a big, big deal. Uh, from a creative standpoint and in terms of a dubbing standpoint well again it completely defeats the purpose um because again the film wasn't the, the entirely nostalgic from a story standpoint so the the score in at least the japanese version partially made up for that regardless of how wonky the film's plot was in itself like it was just a big loss honestly like and it was so disheartening because like <laughs> Mere hours before I went into the theater to see it, I had heard that it was only one track. And I was like, oh, no. So I go into the theater, and they started playing Pokemon um, Generation clips beforehand. And that kept a lot of video game... The, the, oh, well, the dubs of those kept all of the video game music. So I'm like, 
okay, you know, maybe it was just a fluke, right? I was just making up a lot of excuses for myself to try to comfort myself. And then the minute the film opened up and I heard music that wasn't on the soundtrack CD, I was like, oh no. And then when I heard music that wasn't the Kanto Wild Pokemon battle theme from the Red and Blue games, I was like, oh no. And about three minutes in, I realized I'm about to watch an entire um, modern dub Pokemon project with only one track kept at the very end. Oh no, like from an audio standpoint, I just did not have the best experience. The score itself, I think was probably the best Goldfarb's produced, even if I wish it was, you know, a bit more nostalgic for the film's sake. But even then it didn't really hit me that hard with the exception of maybe a couple cues here and there. Um, the rest of it still felt very Mickey Mousey, very just disjointed, and some of the tone of some scenes was definitely changed. But that's, yeah, no, like I don't even know what else what else I can say about that. Movie twenty was just ultimately my point where I'm like, okay, this dub isn't going to get any better for me anytime soon. And with no official subs in sight, that's probably the biggest thing that I can really ask for out of the company at this point, for, for this point, right? But even then, that would take a lot of fan support. And it's not like the Pokemon fan base is going to willing to band together like something like the Dragon Ball fan base, so <laughs> forget it. Um, but yeah, no. So, of course, with Movie 21 coming out, uh, announced to be a continuation of this uh, alternate universe, I don't have any high hopes for the dub i'll go probably see it for the visual aspect especially with wood studio being involved but like yeah no i i, I fully expect it to be fully dub scored uh i do not expect the japanese version as usual to be released over here internationally even though ign who probably got official confirmation and um <laughs> to release the Japanese trailer on their YouTube channel for the first time. It, it, that feels like it would be a tease with any other company, but this is TPCI. I could get my hopes up, but I could also know, I also know that it'll probably shatter my dreams. <laughs> well, it's just a shame that it, the entire anime has to be affected like this now. And we'll probably be in a very similar state for many years to come, unless by some fluke, uh, it just gets super popular again and makes all this money. But... <laughs> I don't know. I doubt it. It's disheartening. I said that a lot. Um, and I don't have really high hopes for it. But who knows? Maybe one day I'll check back in in 10 years or something. And then hopefully we'll at least have a little more transparency. Because that's all I can really ask for at this point. But with TPCI and how they handle other parts of the company as well, I wouldn't put my bet on it. But yeah, that's more or less what I think here. So my history with the English dub of Pokemon is as follows. When I was about 8 years old, I went to a video store. This was back in the, tape, back in the days of VHS. Um, and I rented a VHS tape that had the episodes where Ash got the Kanto starters. I put the tape in, and from the instant I heard the theme song, I was hooked. I didn't know what I was getting myself into when I was eight years old, but after the three episodes ended, I fell in love with it, and I continued to watch the episodes on Kids WB, I started collecting the cards, then I started playing the games, and everything was all fine and dandy with Pokemon until that fateful day in 2006 when the Mastermind of Mirage Pokemon aired on Kids WB, and I was horrified when I heard the new voices. Nobody sounded like they should. Um, yes, it was great that they kept the Japanese soundtrack. That's about the only good thing about that special. Other than that, it's trash. One of the worst dubbed Pokemon things that I can possibly think of. Then that fateful day in September of 2006 came, and it was the start of season nine. And I realized then that the dub was not going to get better because they ached for kids dub almost exactly. Right down to mixing the Japanese soundtrack with dub music 
Heck, they were even recycling some of the old 4Kids tracks. Uh, the voice acting was much weaker. Especially from Ash, James, and Meowth. And, yes, May started off a little rough, but I think she got better as time went on. Especially in the Monophy movie. Um, Bill Rogers' as Brock, I never had any real issue with. Yes, it didn't sound very much like Eric Stewart. But I got used to it over time. Uh, then Diamond and Pearl came. Uh, it started off rough, but it did get a little bit better as time went on. Um, the voices of the new characters, Dawn, Paul, etc., I thought all of their voices were pretty well chosen. And I think it's just because they didn't have a four kids voice to ape. Uh, then we go to the Best Wishes series. Season 14 was the best season that TPCI ever dubbed. They kept most of the Japanese music intact. The scripts were pretty faithful. The voice acting was tolerable. But then Rival Destinies comes and we're right back to the standards that were set forth by Diamond and Pearl. In fact, musically it's about on par with Mid Johto. Under four kids. And pretty much ever since season 15, the dub has been getting worse and worse. It really started to hit an all-time low in Sun and Moon. Heck, I'd say even XY, when they got Ed Goldfarb to start composing the dub music. I think the biggest slap in the face to the fans of the Japanese version and its music is when Cartoon Network aired the sneak peek versions of XY 1 and 2 with all of the Japanese music left intact only to then, three months later, air the real versions, and I say that loosely, uh, only to find that most of the music had been taken out and replaced with Ed Goldfarb's generic music. I was horrified. From that point on, I jumped ship from the dub and started watching the Japanese version, but I've heard about a lot of the stuff that TPCI has been doing lately with Sun and Moon. More of the Japanese music is being replaced, right down to the point where sometimes we have episodes where they only keep the title screen music, and that's it. Really? Then, I Choose You. Oh boy. Yes, the dub was decent. It would have been a lot better if the original voice actors had been involved, and it would have been a lot better had the Japanese music been kept. But, thankfully, a fan, Puto went about that problem and fixed it, so now we can at least watch the English dub with the Japanese soundtrack. And I'm very thankful for him for that. Unfortunately, it cannot fix the voice acting problem. And season 21, it's just getting worse. Most episodes are keeping only one or two pieces of music, and that's about it. I'm sorry, this dub is not getting any better. It's only going to get worse, and I predict by Gen 8, we won't have any Japanese music. It'll be all dub score, and I don't think that it's a good idea. Honestly, TPCI needs to just fire Ed Goldfarb. Really, they need to fire everybody and start over. And if they fire everybody and start over, maybe we might get the original cast back and the Japanese soundtrack. So, this has been my thoughts on how bad the Pokemon English dub has gotten. My subjective ranking of the dubs is the rest of black and white, and then X and Y, and Sun and Moon, Battle Frontier, Diamond and Pearl, Black and White, Episode 116, but objectively, I'd say the Sun and Moon and XY dubs are the worst. XY managed to, to get this bad without Bill Rogers. Let me repeat that. They sunk two revels previously unheard of before, and Bill Rogers wasn't involved in it. How is that possible? If you want to know what I think of the Mega Evolution Special Dub, 
Alright, so here's a list of common things the 4Kids dub has criticized for doing that the TPCI dub also did and is as guilty of doing. So A, mixing up Pokemon names and locations. Now, whereas 4Kids had their slip up such as calling Pidgeotto Pidgeot in Movie 1, or the reverse in Hoenn alone, calling Voltorb Electrode in the third Pikachu short, calling Pewter City Flint City in Johto, or calling Seafoam Island Seafoam Islands in Kanto. TBCI has also done these types of things, in terms of calling Hound Hour Hound Doom from A to Z in the XYZ dub, having a Voltorb Cry Electrode in Hoopa Surprise Ring Adventure Short 3, calling Mammal Swine Mammal Swine and playing the performance on Course dub, Diamond Pearl episode 152. Misspelling names before correcting themselves for Pokemon like Combuskin as Combuskin with an I instead of an E in Battle Frontier in the title card, or when they had Mincino spelled as Mincino initially in one black and white, who's that Pokemon segment, before the correcting the form of two mistakes. Here are other mistakes TBC I did not correct on the other hand, like Lana calling him Lugia Lugiet as well in the Sun and Moon dub, when they had Ash call his Greninja Greninjo. Erroneously and infamously in the XYZ dub episode, battling a full volume. Calling Heart Home City Eterna City in Tears for Fears in the Diamond and Pearl dub in Sinnoh, which is the first episode Dewar dubbed. Diamond and Pearl episode 53. The dub of Top Down Training places the setting of the episode as Amity Square, which is Diamond and Pearl episode 40, while the Japanese version just places it in a nature park that's unique to the anime. B. Mixing up Pokemon types, slash evolution, slash item names, etc. Whereas 4Kids had their slip ups in terms of saying things like how Arbok evolved into Surviper and one trainer's choice segment, calling Ferret a ground type when it was a normal type, or saying water types are weak against fire types. TPCI also had these kinds of slip ups in terms of saying things like Max saying earth type attack instead of a ground type attack before correcting that error in a Re-airing of the dub episode to chip off the old rock in the Battle Frontier season. The time when TVCI said Ekans was an Arbok in the original dub of the Mystery Dungeon special port, that was corrected. And then here, Aeris TVCI never corrected, like calling potions lotions in the Sun and Moon dub. And lotion, a lotion, and lotion. Something four kids never did. Having Malva say Dog a Pulse Go instead of Dark Pulse. Having a character of the day in the XYZ dub say Vivian used stuns for when the actual move was sleep powder in Japanese. And, uh, you know, I hear the excuse that, oh, TBCI corrected Mega Drain in the Japanese version to Grass Knob, but Pork is also cre corrected Thunder Wave to Zap Cannon in the Advanced Generation dub. So both does fix mistakes from time to time. It wasn't just TBCI, they were already present in the Japanese version. Now here, C, making miscellaneous rewrites of the script. Whereas 4Kids had their own dumb moments with outdated references to the Macarena, Minnesota Vikings, various other cringeworthy moments from time to time, depending on the episode or film over the years. TBCI also had such script rewrites transpire under their tenure, and in some cases, they actually exacerbated issues present in the 4Kids dub scripts or created issues of their own in translation. Some examples. TBCI took the handful of times 4Kids made Team Rocket alliterate or rhyme, and they made that a constant thing in their dub, beginning with the Diamond and Pearl dub season, all of Black and White except the first Black and White dub season, XY's dub, and Sun Moon dub. Here are some examples of TPCI dub exclusive rewrites that weren't present in the 4Kids dub, and are, or the Japanese version are only present in this dub. Primo Perps, Pilfering Primo Pokemon, Talk Shock T's free for you and me. Ante's on the run, let's have fun. Yo ho ho ho. You brag, now you're tagged. As long as I'm on the mound, you're outbound. Etc. The list goes on and on. In addition to this, Meowth also developed a catchphrase. Dig it in the TBCI dub, as well as Oy Vey, Lugs, and Mugs, which he never used to say in the 4Kids dub and didn't does not say in the Japanese version either. Ash was also given the catchphrases of A, hey, so psyched, and the like, whereas he only said psyched a handful of times in the old dub. 
TBCI made this a constant thing in their dub. Uh, and TBCI gave Ash dialogue he never used to stay in the Forkist dub and didn't in the Japanese version either. Like, gonna be wiped? I'm not a noob. I'm so stoked. We're gonna be okay dokey. That's the way we roll. Step on the gas. That's a fire type. Nice and fiery. And another thing that lasted all the way until mid BW's dub was I got me the X symbol or badge. Uh, observation, I'm an observer, I'm doing it. And the DP dub. The taste, just eyeball it in the sun and moon dub. Nathaniel reminds me of me in the Diamond Pearl dub. And has now not only recently translated Thanks for the Food incorrectly into Down the Hatch in the Sun and Moon dub, that they've also made it his catchphrase. Whenever Ash eats anything, and it's not just said one time by him, it's said multiple times by him in random episodes. And that's the problem. Ash also had an annoying habit of saying, you see, you know, and of course, during the Battle Frontier and Diamond and Pearl dubs. That was a verbal tick that TPCI gave him for whatever reason that Ash did not have in the Forkis dub and does not have in the Japanese version. May was also given suggestive dialogue not present in the Forkis dub, like, I've never seen Ash work it so hard. You keep on talking like that and I'm gonna blush. As well as, see, sometimes I can do the right thing. So all the sexually suggestive stuff. As well as maxing lines he didn't use to state in the Forkis dub, like, those fighting type Pokemon sure know how to fight. Well, is why you thought great about Frontier Dub episode, so they dumped him down. There was also Brock alliterating in the Diamond and Pearl Dub and flirting scenes when he didn't do that in the Four Kids Dub, and he did, certainly doesn't do it in the Japanese version. At random intervals, like babbling brook, shook, great look, magic moment, like limpid pools, and very strange dialogue in the Diamond and Pearl Dub that was disturbing from both Brock and James like break me break me as well as danger too much hemp and that wasn't fitting for the characters at all what's even worse than that is at least four kids say for adding poke to words at times and titles or random which tpci also did with pokey child from jesse and the downer pro dub as well as pokey monic from meowth and pokey peepers from james and the bow from tear dub for james and meowth at least four kids never made up words that weren't extensions of that. TBCI, however, has made up words just like that in the X and Y and Sun X Y and Sun and Moonos. Some examples of made up gibberish dialogue that TBCI has done that's not in the Japanese version and was not in the four kids club includes Fershinsta, Fershinista, Cutie or Pie, and Transformathon from the XY dub. In the episode Grooming Fur Flu, as well as Honeylicious and Scrumpchi. In the sun and moon dub. And even adding in words and episode titles that aren't actual words. Specifically, dance a capades, which isn't a word. Four kids never did that. As for episode titles, both dubs had their fair share of bad puns and straight translations. The TPCI's dub titles have used alliteration far more frequently, had sexually suggestive titles, and outdated references like Getting the Pre-Contest Titters from the Diamond Pearl dub, Lull the Talala Land from the Sun and Moon dub, as well as Yo Ho Ho, Go Pop Leo, and the Green, Gra the Green Green Grass Types of Home from the XY dub. Even four kids never did listen to their dub. Another thing that's changed is whereas Forkids would keep references from the Japanese version to God, Heaven, and even Death in their scripts, Jodo and Hoenn in terms of keeping references to God and Heaven, and Kanto and Hoenn in terms of keeping references to Death. On the other hand, TPCI has been continuously covering them, them up in ways that Forkids didn't, from the Diamond and Pearl dub onward when it comes to anything having to do with God and Heaven, and from the XY dub onward when it has to do comes to when it comes to anything that has to deal with death. So overall, the, four, the TPCI dub script had all the same flaws of the four kids dub scripts in terms of rewrites, but none of their strengths, and the TPCI added their own problems in the mix that weren't present in the four kids dub scripts. But we'll delve more into that later on. Finally, point D, Americanization and various visual edits. 
Now, whereas four kids would, you know, cover up rice balls with jelly donuts or make rolling sandwiches slash crackers at times. Although, to be fair, four kids did call them rice balls correctly in Pokemon Paparazzi, Ash and Brock did so. Episode 55 of the original series, A Tale with a Twist and Hoenn, Team Rocket said it correctly, Rice Ball Free For All. And then Brock again in a corvish out of the water in advanced when he said, Looks like our rice balls are no slush balls. TPCI, on the other hand, has also done food censorship. They called Apple's berries numerous times during the season 16 BW dub and XY era dubs. They also covered up peas and carrots as named vegetables and just refer to them as the generic term veggies because they want to dumb down the scripts even more. And TPCI has done something four kids never did. They changed wine cups to orange juice glasses in the Sun and Moon dub. Even in Hoenn, four kids kept wine cups. TPCI couldn't do it in Sun and Moon. And to make matters worse, TPCI had kids drinking what appears to be alcohol and Whereas adults are drinking acid in an edit they made to the Sun and Moon dub, episode 42. What makes this worse is, whereas four kids let Meowth go drown and go by uncensored in season one or Indigo League's dub, TPCI censored that in the Sun and Moon dub. Same goes for Ash's soul being allowed to come out of his body in the Kanto dub. But this was again censored by TPCI in the Sun and Moon dub in terms of Wobbuffet's soul not being allowed to exit his body now. Additionally, like Forkus did in their dub, TPCI has been wiping out any kanji from any moves involving Z-moves in the Sun and Moon dub. They also did that to gym leaders like Karina and all of them in the XY and Lelis, XYZ dub respectively numerous times. So they're still Americanizing the dub. However, unlike Forkus in their earlier seasons, namely Kanto or Indigo Leaf, TPCI opts to just leave everything blank now, replacing it with nothing since XY's dub began, which is extremely evident in the Team Rocket motto in the English dub in the Sun and Moon era. They're too lazy to put anything in place of the kanji that they order removed, so they put nothing in it. To add insult to injury, TPCI is even editing pre-censored stuff now by TPC Japan, like glitter vomit out of the dub these days. So overall, they're no better than 4Kids by this point on visually editing or Americanizing things, since the XY dub began specifically in TPCI's case. Finally, here's some interesting trivia. The most visual edits in a dub episode are in the battle according to Lenora in black and white, where 50 shots of Lenora's apron had to be edited out. Keep in mind that even 4Kids' worst episode on visual edits, which is Princess vs. Princess in mid-canto, only had 44 shots of kanji erased in comparison. So as it turns out, the episode with the largest number of individual edits was actually in the TVC item. To add insult to injury, the largest time-based edit was in the XYZ dub when Ash got crucified. So yeah, not even under four kids. And it was 12 minutes worth of reanimation TVC I ordered all of them to do, just like they did with Leonard's apron, so... This only reinforces the fact that TVCI is just as guilty of Americanization and visual edits as 4Kids was with their dub now. But what is different is that not only is the episode with the largest number of individual edits in the TVCI dub, but also the episode with the largest time-based edit now in the TVCI dub. Overall, the conclusion I can make is that every single criticism that you can level against the 4Kids dub also applies to the TVCI dub. Even if it's in a different way, TBC Ida was guilty of still does Americanization, still censors things, still rewrites the script heavily, etc. Alright, so I'm going to get into a very divisive topic in the Pokemon fandom. Uh, as a disclaimer, these are just my subjective opinions and thoughts on the English dub of Pokemon's voice acting over the years. All in all, I think the 4Kid dub had better vocal direction and voice acting than the TPCI dub did. I'm already aware that the TPCI dub cast has been on the show for 12 years. I already know the 4Kid dub cast was on there for 8 years. This is not nostalgia before I get that handed to me. No, don't let try playing the nostalgia card. This is just my opinion, but that is not valid. I've given both casts ample time to demonstrate their skills and whatnot. 
Uh, generally speaking, I think Veronica Taylor did the best job as Ash. I did not care for Sarah Nada Kenny's Ash because she was very inconsistent. Over the last 12 years, she sounded very gruff and deep. At times, very raspy and effeminate at others, and too old for the most part. Casey Rogers also sounded very nasally and a bit too old to me as well. In the Mastermind special. When it comes to Brock, Eric Stewart sounded the most like a normal 15-year-old, whether it's in Canto, Dodo, or Hoenn. The performance sounded very consistent to me, and I liked his voice the most. Uh, Johnny Young Bosch and Origins was a little bland and generic, but certainly much better than Bill Rogers, who feels very miscast. He sounded way too old, deep, gruff, raspy, r like a rough neck and very gruff. And I especially don't care for the performances of Bill Rogers and Diamond and Pearl and Sun and Moon. He cannot do anything. He sounds too constipated when he's grunting or he's flirting with a woman or anything like that. He sounds very strained and forced. Eric Stewart is my favorite, bro. Starting Bosch is pretty mediocre second. So Bill Rogers is my least favorite rock. Uh, when it comes to Misty, I think Rachel Lewis did the best job. She sounded most like the tomboyish 10-year-old girl to me. Whereas with Michelle Knott, she did a good impression at first in the Mastermind special, but got deteriorated in the black and white flashback to sounding more like Iris. And then in the Sun and Moon dub, sounds very nasally, more like a woman. And the voice is very forced, and it doesn't sound natural at all. So I think Rachel Lewis did the best, Misty, and I did not care for Michelle Knott's performance. With uh, James, I think Eric Stewart did the best job, especially in Mid Canto to Mid Yodo was the best dub, in my opinion. But Ted Lewis and early Canto Eric Stewart James, I don't, I think is very average, but they're very bland and generic. And Ho and Dub James is not as bad as many people say it is, but it's it's decent, but it's a little goofier than I would like it to be at times. Uh, but James Carter Cathcart James is my least favorite of the three. He sounds too old, he sounds goofy, he sounds nasally, he shouts way too often. And he sounds like he has a cold or some congestion or some sinus issues. I don't know what it is. James Carter Cathcart is my least favorite James. And Eric Stewart is my favorite James in the English stuff. Uh, when it comes to Jesse, I think Rachel Lewis did a better job than Michelle Knotts. Because Rachel Lewis was able to be taken more seriously. Whereas Michelle Knotts has a very airheaded and valley girlish tone to some of her deliveries when she has to scream or shout. Nowadays, especially in X, Y, The Sun and Moon. So I prefer Rachel Lewis as Jesse over Michelle Knotts. Um, because Rachel Lewis sounded more like a woman. Michelle Knotts sounds more like a teenage girl at times. When she has to shout or scream or emote. Um, so yeah, I don't really care for Michelle Knotts as Jesse. She was good at first and Battle Frontier, but it deteriorated really badly in X, Y, and Sun and Moon, so I don't like it right now. She was okay at first, but now she's not good at all, in my opinion. Uh, James Carter Cathcart uh, as Meowth is extremely miscast, but I'm going to get to Meowth now on that note. Um, I think Maddie Boston did the best job. She sounded very caddish, but also like the CAU. Inuko Inuyama, the voice is Nyasu in Japanese, so I like Mary Blossom's dub me out the most in English. Nathan Price was close second, but he's a little, his deliveries are a little weird at times at first. But he's decent, and his Carter Cathcart, as I said before, feels very miscast. Very deep, gruff, rough, menacing, overly mean and aggressive. You don't really get much of the kind side of me out here. It's very one-dimensional in comparison to the other two, so... Um, when it comes to Professor Oak, I think Stuart Zagnet did the best job. He sounded very age-appropriate, wise, elderly, kind. Like, you know, a grandfatherly figure was very, also very wise. So Stuart Zagnet fit Professor Oak the best. Kylie Bear in Origins is pretty average. It's a little bland and generic is what I have to say. Still more fitting than James Carter Cathcart, though. In my opinion, James Carter Cathcart sounds... Too mad scientisty, too malicious, too young at other times. It's just he feels miscast. It's Professor Oak and uh, Delia. I think Veronica Taylor again did a better job than Sarah. Not a Jenny because Veronica Taylor sounded more like a twenty-nine-year-old woman who's very kind and bubbly and energetic, but also absent-minded. Whereas with 
Sarah and Atogeny, her deliveries are very flat and wooden at times, and in Sun and Moon, the voice is very deep and does not sound very effeminate. Oddly, her Delia nowadays sounds more masculine than her Ash, which is baffling to me, but that goes back to Lisa Ortiz's poor vocal direction lately, so I blame that. When it comes to um, May, Veronica Taylor did a better job than Michelle Knox to me because Veronica Taylor was more consistent and she sounded more like a 10-year-old girl and more energetic and bubbly. But whereas with Michelle Knox, she sounds very seductive and like a 20 to 30-year-old woman at times and at other times she sounds very high-pitched and inconsistent like an 8-year-old. It's it, I never bought Michelle Knox's performance as a it wasn't age appropriate overall. It was very inconsistent and just did not feel like a good fit for the character. And with Max, I preferred Amy Birnbaum's Max over Casey Rogers' Max because Amy Birnbaum sounded more like a seven year old boy, more, you know, not just nerdy, but also could capture his sad and serious side well too. Whereas Casey Rogers' Max, Casey Rogers' Max was more nasally and he kind of slipped into elderly woman territory whenever Max had to yell or shout, so I think Amy Birnbaum did a better job with Max. And, um, you know, generally speaking, any Generation 1 to 3 character, meaning Cantu, Jodo, or Hoenn, I think had a better voice before the four-pisted TPCI dub change than what they would get for the rest of the run with the series in the English dub. And, you know, that's just my opinion on if you disagree, if you like the TPCI cast more, that's fine. But I think the four kids dub had the better voice acting and vocal direction. I think the four kids dub holds up better in this regard. And that's just my opinion. Again, if you disagree, that's fine. But I'm giving you rational, calm reasons why I have the opinions that I do. And I'm just, honestly, I think the TPCI dub had really subpar voice acting throughout its run. And... Especially once Tom Whalen took over as voice director, Teresa Bookheister didn't change much of anything, and Lisa Ortiz is not much better with Alon, for instance, Mega Evolve, overacting in season 19. Lily sounds 30. Um, Milo sounds 25. Lana sounds like she has a cold. Kiawe's voice actor is hit or miss. Sometimes he'll emote, sometimes he'll sound bored. Kukui is similar to Kiawe. Um, Sophocles has a good dub voice and is probably the only one that has a consistently good performance. So props to Alice and Rosenthal for that. Uh, Dawn had a good dub voice. Uh, Iris and Silence sounded fine. Clement sounded a bit too deep and old, but so did his Japanese voice. So I won't blame Michael Lichio Jr. for that. Even Pashal sounded too old as Serena. Sounded more like a woman than a little girl. Allison resentful as Bonnie, just too nasally, too stilted in her deliveries. It sounds too forced. And she's using that voice for Largo in Movie 21. And so is Haven using her Serena voice in Movie 21 for Lisa. Possibly on the latter, but I know Allison is Largo, so I don't find either of those castings good. And, um, uh,. You know, and even the Pokemon's voices, forget the humans, I think those have suffered in the transition between the two dubs. I mean, Gudra by Tom Whalen was just like a Scooby-Doo ripoff. Talonflame by Alex Haynes sounded like a stereotype of a jock. Alolan Executor and the Sun and Moon sounds mentally challenged. To be blunt, Pelipper sounds like a grandmother rather than, you know, like a bird. Like AZ Rogers, Pelipper was more like a bird, but... Lori Himes' Pelipper is very forced and stilted, in my opinion. And um, Electra sounded pretty bad in the black and white dub, too. Um, you know, overall, the Pokemon dub voices suffer, too, in the transition. Psyduck doesn't sound as good as it used to. Geodude sounds okay now, but not as good. A lot of Pokemon's voices suffered in the transition between the two dubs, too. So it isn't just the human characters. Overall, I think the four kids dub had the better vocal direction over the DPCI dub, and I would I prefer the four kids dub voice acting. Even if it was around for less time, I think they did a better job. So that's just my opinion. If you disagree, that's fine. This is just a opinion section on the voice acting. 
And with that, I'm going to hand over the reins to Deteriorate James, who's going to share his opinions on English dub Brock and James. And then I'll might add in some of my input on that. But that's it. So thanks for hearing me out. And uh, we'll continue the roundtable discussion in this video. So enjoy. In Battle Frontier, he blew it. When I first heard it in Fear Factor Phony, I knew I wasn't going to like it. And guess what? I still don't like it. You may say, give him a chance, give him a chance. How much more time does he need? He's had 12 years and he's never gave me a convincing performance. I don't ask for much. I know Eric Stewart is a high bar to jump over, but he could just try. <laughs> All he has to do is give me a convincing performance just for one episode. He couldn't even do that much. So in Battle Frontier, he was really nasally. He couldn't talk normally. He in Sweet Baby James, he was so awful. He, the way he emoted was just to hold his nose, and then raise his voice a little to indicate sadness. And and he overacted a lot too. Like, like he said, I'd rather die. He couldn't just scream like a normal person because, you know, that would make sense. He got a, a lot worse in Diamond and Pearl. Now instead of just nasally, he sounded feeble and old. Way, way, way too old. He sounded like the wind would kick his ass at any moment now. And he sounded fat. Once again, his attempts at emoting failed. Whenever he... Whenever he had to do more than just speak, he always sounded afraid, like when Eric Stewart called out someone's name, he would just say normally, like, Meowth? Jesse? James Carter Cathcart is like, Meowth? Jesse? Even when he's just speaking normally, how do you feel that bad? Now people are gonna say, but deteriorated James, he got so much better in Best Wishes, he sounds more camp and flamboyant, it's so much more appropriate for the character. No, it's not. It's almost as nasally as it ever was. It's not as feeble and wussy sounding than it used to be, I mean as it used to be. But he sounds so much more old and snooty. He, <clears throat> I know James is a rich guy, but James is a character that defies his roots. So for James to play the rich guy aspect of the character straight is just disgraceful. He also plays weird emphasis on certain words. Like for instance, when saying a canto model, he'd say, <coughs> The people within a nation didn't even get it right. It's all peoples. Thanks, Carter. His voice isn't funny. It's just annoying. And now we get to XY. I've said everything I could say about the previous three series. And yeah, those are nothing compared to how we voiced them in X and Y. Everything bad that people have ever said about Eric Stewart, and everything bad I just said about James Carter Cathcart, he mixed them in one voice, and it's not good. It's like he took the negative criticism and, that we've been saying about both himself and Eric Stewart, but instead of addressing it, he says, I'm gonna do more of that thing you don't like. Goofy voice? Check. Nasally? Check. Old? Check. Feeble? Check. Wimpy? Check. Annoying? Infinite? Check. Just one of these alone, except Goofy, is bad enough, but all of them 
It's just unbearable. And at this point, I ask, what did Eric Stewart do so wrong? All he did was put on a goofy voice for a goofy character. Meanwhile, James Carter Capcar made a 25-year-old man sound two times older. He made a character that <clears throat> that wasn't that was wimpy, but not that wimpy. Sound like the biggest pussy in the entire planet. <sighs> He made a character that doesn't have a code sound like uh, he is very nasally. You, you, for any of you guys that played Wind Waker, remember that kid with mucus dripping out his nose that that chased you in Outset Island? That that's what Carter reminds me of. For anyone listening. I challenge you to tell me what Eric Stewart did wrong that James Carter Cathcart didn't do worse in any saga. In a poached ego and training days, I felt more than one emotion. In Sweet Baby James, So There Were Green Fields, or whatever that dumb title was called, and all the other emotional James episodes, all I felt was, all I could think was, please clean off, clean up that mucus, blow your nose, stop talking, I can hear the, I can practically see the snot dribbling on your Team Rocket outfit. So how can he make, make it worse in Sun and Moon, you might ask? You probably don't think it's possible, but this is James Carter Cathcart we're talking about. Even I didn't have much faith in him to pull it off, but he managed it. How, you ask? <laughs> well, it's the same garbage as before, but <laughs> in one episode, fighting back the tears, he, <laughs> he slips into his Meowth voice. He builds up a scream using his terrible James voice, and and then he and then it slowly gets deeper and deeper. And when he lets out the scream, it's meow. Like how? How did nobody catch that? Lisa Ortiz should have said, "You sound like meow. Do it again." It's horrible. No respectable voice director would keep that voice for him. Armin, you failed. Tom Whalen, fuck you. Just fuck you. I hope you rot in jail for what you did to Amber. Teresa Bachister, you failed. Lisa Ortiz, you failed. Now that we've established that James Carter Cathcart was never good and Eric Stewart got better, I'm gonna move on to Brock. People say that Eric Stewart's Brock in Hoenn became Kaiba-like, but I don't see it. I know they're the same voice actor because I did research, but Brock came before Kaiba. His voice never changed at all to me past his debut episode. He doesn't even sound like Kaiba. Kaiba has a way deeper voice than Owen Brock. Owen Brock sounds the exact same as Midcat or the Jolo Brock. He sounds excellent. There's nothing bad I can say. It's, it sounds like a 15 year old, sounds age appropriate. Johnny Young Boss is so bland. I know Eric Stewart was a high bar to jump over once again, but he could have been much better. He was so bland, and he talked almost in a monotone. Like, a lot of people say he didn't get much to work with. Giovanni's role was small, and he didn't suck nearly this bad. If there's one good thing I can say about him, at least, at least, he's not Bill Rogers. Oh boy, Bill Rogers is the worst of the three, and he wasn't good in Battle Frontier either.
He was so raspy and he sounded like he had a sore throat. And in the flirting sense, he sounded angry. Like, Eric Stewart sounded fanatical, but Bill Rogers so- sounded angry and constipated. He was like, uh, insert confession here, my love, please, please, somebody pull my ears so I can shut up once and for all. And you know, he got even worse. He was way deeper, sounded more like an old man than ever before. I think this, have any of you guys seen that? Anime America interview with Bill Rogers because I think that sums it up perfectly. <laughs> what deteriorated change? Bill Rogers voiced him when he was stale. That's not an excuse for you sounding like an old, angry man. Same thing with the black and white flashbacks. He sounded the same. There was no change. From Sinnoh to Unova to Alola, it was the same garbage. Not to insult the current cast, I'll say some good roles. Cernotogeny is good as Sif. I've heard that in um, uh, Thor. She's good as that. Um, Bill Rogers was good as Tucker in Battle Frontier. I'm just to say I'm so well that I'm not a hater. <clears throat> I will also say uh, Bill Rogers, I actually really liked as the Hyrule King in Breath of the Wild. because He, he was, was good as him. He's good as the king. Um, uh, Michelle yeah. Lance is good as Snivy in the black, black and white dub. He was good oh. as um, Snivy. Yeah. Um, James Carter Cathar was good as Gary and Weevil. Um, yeah. Uh, Casey Rogers was good was, as Pokemon Chi Boys. And just um, for Kappa Carpa, Jason Clapper Carpa Carpa, I can't clap for Carpa Carpa, I can't say his name. So it's good as Vector and Sonic X. Shove a head, I wish you were up and have Actors are working hard, and we're not trying to put them down. Yes. This is just to say that, honestly, I gave it a chance, or oh, a lot of you did too. It just isn't as good as what it replaced. But I will say that, um, yeah. the, the Charmander in this movie is. At least better than Tom Whalen's Charmander. Movie. I'll give them credit for that, but I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah. Said the bar so low. Tom Whalen set the bar so low. I, I don't know if you know. I, I mean, yeah. Billy Bob Thompson is okay. I prefer Michael Hagney, but at least he did better than Tom Whalen, which is. Uh, oh, no, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Bill Rogers. Yeah, Bill Rogers. At least Bill Rogers and also Bill Rogers is not any nearly as despicable a person at all as Tom Whalen. Tom Whalen is just a horrible person. Tom Whalen is a horrible person. Um. So it's not that the actors are talented, just the voice direction wasn't as good. For whatever reason, I, I feel it's the poor kids dub. Even their worst was not this poor, in my opinion. Um, the script writing, TBCI also had their problems. Four kids also had their problems. But honestly, somehow I think it's even a little more dumb than it was before. What do you guys think? I'd have to like, agree with that. Like I said, they get some things really, really good. Sometimes even better than four kids. To be honest, yeah, but, but then it's they just go backwards. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's that's it's extremely inconsistent, and that's the biggest problem. Some days they'll be accurate, and some days they'll just go even more off than four kids would, and it's just I don't know, you know what the the, in the script the problem is inconsistent. They can't. Yeah, you can go watch the show, and you never know what you're gonna get. Some days they'll be accurate, and sometimes they're complete garbage. It's- yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's like, why invest my time in a show where I'm never sure if I'm gonna be satisfied with whatever I get. The and the music situation. Um, I, I never thought I would actually look back on Advanced Generation and think this is good, but at least better than what we have now. It's better than the last five years of the dub. I'm serious. Yeah, it's yeah. really sad. Oh yeah. And then uh, uh, the, the editing is. We're going back to four kids here on that, so that's a huge disappointment. What do you guys think? Yeah, yeah it's, very it's big disappointment. Easily going down back to that. Yeah. The only other thing I can think of. Full intros. Really generic. And it's short. They're short. And they're not fun. There's no real good energy to them. Yep. They yeah. they just they're not inspired either. They're very they generic very and boring. Bored. And yeah, before like, I thought this was just a trend in TV, then I realized that there's shows on the same network, similar style, similar genre, that keep 
full intros. So no, this is just TPCI being lazy or not wanting to have to pay. Well, you know, they have versions of these intros. They usually record full intro versions of these intros. Use a longer cut. Yeah. I mean, and I it's like I it. thought the same thing too. I thought maybe it was a you know standard for the channel or the network. No, it's just TPCI being as cheap as they can with it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because Beyblade Burst is, has a dub opening that's equal to a short Cold War Kids Pokemon opening. It's forty-five seconds, and then you look at Yokai Watch has a minute-long theme, like most, like four of the eight Four Kids Pokemon themes. Yeah, so I mean, I think it used to be a Cartoon Network. Disney yeah. IT, you know, they're open to having it longer. Yeah, yeah they're people. open to having it longer now, and they're still up. They're actually even shorter than the cartoon. Network. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what's up with them. Maybe it's just whatever gets the the music the time. faster. Yeah, I, I don't know what else it could be. I could see that the the opening theme is just like the last thing done. It's a score, then the opening theme. Just find something that's or it's just like kids. okay, put something together. Yeah, <laughs> it's like they whatever. use Windows or Movie like, Maker, and then just ball. go in and. Mess around with it, and there we go. No intro. Yeah. So all this just proves our case of how we feel against PCI. So the voice yeah. acting just is not as good as what it replaced, even though they've been on the show longer. That's yeah. I yeah. That, that is my that is my biggest personal complaint of TPCI the big voice change. You know. I mean, I, I I don't blame the actors because they're trying, but I do blame the voice direction and. Uh, I right. don't blame Lisa Ortiz personally because this is a problem with Tom Whalen. This is a problem with Teresa McKeister. This is a problem with Armin Mazlumian, was the odd director, right? Yeah. Um, so it, it's just been, there's been inconsistent voice direction. And it's not, the actors aren't, and the actors aren't giving us their best performances because of that. Right. I don't blame the actors at all. I I wish I could get invested in their roles because I am I personally enjoy English dubs of anime. Nine times out of ten, if there's a hot anime going on, I'm just like, hey, so do you know if this is going to be dubbed or when is this going to be dubbed? I usually look forward to dubs more than anything, and I usually only go to subs as last resort because I like seeing dubs. I do, and I think that that's because be fun. our native that's because our native language is English, and we're to it, right. yeah, it's, but, it makes you know, it it's like, easier to enjoy. Yes, but it's like we're watching movies, and then we see all kinds of actors playing their characters. We like to see how it is it is played out, you know. Yeah, and it it has nothing to do with oh. The Zweeb who just wants Japanese only, and no, it's not that. I feel like. Over these last 12 years, TPCI has proven that there's really not much reason I should be watching the dub anymore. It's it's in such a poor state. Just about every quality of it has gone down severely. And yeah, there, yeah. there's no redeeming quality. But now they don't even have that. They're still so this, this just brings to a point, to our point that we're getting burned out by dealing with all of this bullshit that they pull off, and we feel there needs to be change. It's just a disappointment. This dub has been going on longer than four kids dubbed it, and yet it's worse than it used to be. It's yeah. easily worse than it used to be, and it's sad. We shouldn't be at this position in 2018. We should have a decent quality dub, not just for hardcore fans like us, but for just for kids to sit down and enjoy and then have something good to look back on years later. Because to this right. day, there's plenty of us who look back on the four kids dub and yeah, we laugh at the dumb changes, the silly scripts, yeah. the mm -hmm. jelly yeah. donuts, the Sandwiches. obvious paint edits. Yeah. yeah, we laugh it off. But you know what? There was still some charm the acting and directing was still good enough for us to feel emotionally invested in the characters. The music yeah. was generally there and good. Even the dub music was okay. There yeah, John was... Loeffler didn't do a bad job, honestly. Was... Yeah. No. So there was something to go back to. And with the way the dub is now, I don't think that's going to be the same years later. It's not going to age well. It's yeah, it's no surprise, I'm yeah. thinking that um, uh, kids are going to look back fondly on the Pokemon dub. There, there was a quality that you where you could feel 
the people working on it actually cared. Like, yeah, of course there were decisions here and there probably made by executives, but yeah. the people like the voice actors or people doing the music or, you know, sound balancing, you know, and all those, of that, yeah. it felt like they cared about what they were putting out and that they were putting on a show and giving kids memory with yeah. things like the XY and Sun and Moon dub from TPCI dub. It, it's like a factory. It's just get it done, put it out, they'll enjoy it for five minutes. Uh, and yeah. we'll get our ratings and money in. And that's it. Yeah. It, it just feels phoned in, I guess. They're just trying to get by, get get by just to get by because they know. I think with TPCI at this point, unless it's a big movie, well, actually, no, they've proved us. Even if it's a big movie, the anime is an afterthought. And I feel like there's passion for most of the. The staff on the, on yeah. The, I mean, I'm, yeah. I, I can agree with that. Yeah. On. yeah. If people rap on, like James Carver, I believe he goes in the booth. I believe he's excited to record James. He's excited right. about his role for, been, right. for 12 years. He's excited to be in the Carver's project for 20 years. They're still right. part of, even if we don't like his performance. Right. I, the the actors probably have passion for it, but the, 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 the voice direction is not. I mean, I'm. I'm betting Sarah Nodger is still living her like childhood dream. I mean, she was 19 when that when right. that um, uh, like Veronica yeah, Taylor. Yeah. She she yeah. grew up but listening to Veronica Taylor. She probably wanted to get into voiceover because of of shows like I really empathize with that. I really can. Yeah. It's just it's there's so many other cogs to the machine that either aren't working or are really rusty and just barely getting the job done. Yeah, like and, and the voice. The voice direction is not the best, so that doesn't help the actors. So, despite all this passion from the creative team, I honestly feel like the dub is on its last legs. It really is. It really is. It's more like we're hoping. Do, it's more like we're hoping it's on its last legs. Well, well I mean, like the, the viewership more, is lower than ever. So on, on Disney XD, it's only it's like how many more corners can That's they it. cut? How many yeah. more corners can they cut before? They just have to dump the show entirely. There's really not much left. Yeah, Duart might need to change. Like they might need to change studios. Honestly, yeah. I feel TPCI needs to reevaluate the situation and actually care about the product they're putting out because whatever they have, it's not really selling. It's living off of life support from selling royalties to every other country. That's not even just that, just living off nostalgia. It's like, hey, remember this? This is a new version of a show you watched as a kid. Come watch this. Pretty much. Yeah. I wonder how much their DVDs are selling compared to... Probably not good. Probably, Probably not, not much. so well. I mean, I know Pokemon TV isn't very successful either. Yeah. So they... Yeah. At most, they go off of things like Netflix or iTunes. <laughs> uh, I, I think Pokemon TV isn't as successful because a lot of the older episodes from like uh, Indigo League, Johto, Hoenn, a lot of those aren't even available on the app app for some reason. Yeah, like, I know when I try yeah. to open it up, it just says, oh, can't find the video or can't find this. But you can go to the TPCI era or the yeah, and they'll you open, right? Know. Yeah, yeah, that's a bummer. Yeah, yeah so they, it definitely feels like they have a certain vendetta against the four kids dub because it's like the only way you can enjoy that whole series is if you buy it, but you can enjoy ours mm-hmm. for free, you know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's unfortunate, really. The powers that be are the, not yeah. the staff, maybe the staff care, I don't know, but the powers that be definitely are just seeing this as. Yeah, sure, the anime is a market. You someone will say it's a marketing tool for the game. So what? Yeah, sure, but that doesn't mean they shouldn't put some put some effort into just the production value side of it. Yeah. Just just care. Just yeah, care just... about what you're putting out, please. Yeah. I yeah. just hope I just I just hope that for those that support TPCI can understand how we feel and to see that that how we appreciate four kids' efforts for Making the show good in the first place. Yeah, it's like, nobody yeah, is saying not, the four yeah. kids that was perfect. Nobody is saying that. And there were flaws. Yeah. There were flaws. There were edits. There were script changes. The voice actors had some, but we just feel it was done better in certain regards than not. 
And there, yeah, there's some care to it too. It's no yeah, surprise why people always vote for kids' uh, quotes than TPCI quotes. Yeah, I mean, the flaming like, mold trace thing is a meme. Yeah. The drying pan, <laughs> the um, chicken violet my rice thing, the frozen one, the frozen one, the chosen one thing. Yeah, and mm-hmm. there's tons of memes from the um, uh, uh, when you can jump off the cliff, she can jump right, some right off, or some when she means you, she can jump right off the cliff or miss you. Like, there's all this like snarky stuff and yeah. like memes and funny memes. And, yeah. At least it has My, that. Yeah, there's yeah. not really anything memorable from the TVCI era quote wise. I can't really tell you anything that's like. And that says a lot because like nostalgia plays a factor, in, you know, at Pokemon as well. And when, when you right. think about all the kids, and it will like, in future years, or rather, yeah, it all the kids that grow up like, watching kids and seasons one, you know, the original series, you know, they're all grown up now. So when you think about it, I'm sure yeah. they want to show kids like you know their own children. Hey, look! I used to watch this and see how it is now. And you watch CBCI and you realize it's not the same. This isn't how I remember it. No. Yeah, yeah, and like I think that's the kind of the main problem with the I Choose You movies that I think it's supposed to be a movie that kind of reflects just how much Australia. Pokemon, yeah. yeah, Pokemon, how much it influenced you know the U.S. and other countries, and it just wasn't done right. It wasn't appealing to like not even to older fans, but I mean probably fans that probably stopped. Watching it for a while too yeah i mean the nostalgia is not there when you change the voice acting is definitely whether you like it or, or not or better or worse or whatever when you change it's not the, the same script either it, and the script or, and the music too or get rid of the music that you know that was in a lot of the episodes people grew up with yeah yeah and, i'm surprised that there are themes for because kept even in the anime in ad that got her i'm, I'm yeah. actually shocked that. Despite the crap that four kids always get, you know, for the edits and like the little changes, I mean, yeah, I man. will give credit that you know even the actors and the people that worked on the show, you know, they they put some heart and soul into it and just at least give them the good quality, you know, not just for kids to enjoy but for adults. And that's why, like, I mean, I, I would probably say that that's why the quality is, you know, still kind of good to this day. I think TPCI mm-hmm. is lacking, and I'm not surprised, you know, if do our kind of either loses the rights or, you know, probably goes out of business, but the way things are going, I don't mind seeing it, you know, going to Viz Media or Funimation, whoever Funimation, wants Funimation, yeah. Yeah, yeah. at least, you know, they're willing to Or Bang do. Zoom or whoever, yeah, I'm sorry. But... Yeah, at least whatever it takes to kind of get the show, you know, back up to speed. Rolling again. Is doing yeah. well. And maybe perhaps, which is I'm hoping, you know, probably someday, maybe uh, letting the show be on Crunchyroll, maybe allowing some Japanese episodes... So we don't no longer have to pirate and show that there's other versions of the show that people don't realize. Yeah, it's like more yeah. than anything, give people That's an option. Biggest... Just to watch give the them Japanese an option. Legally it's living 2018. Something. And it's 21 yeah. years now. We still don't have that option. It's just... Even Yu-Gi-Oh! and Yu-Gi-Oh! G- by Gonk- yeah, even Pokemon. four kids will do that for Yu-Gi-Oh! now. Okay, media, Konami, but we can't do that for Pokemon still. And it's like, I can see some people would make the argument that, well, then the Japanese version might cannibalize the dub because the dub is so poor. But not in that case, that's all the more mm-hmm. reason to make the dub better. Make and it then work. the dub fans would have their version and the people who want to see a different version and would then have, have everybody would complain. happy. Complain go down. Yeah, complaining would go down. Like, mm-hmm. it, it's the win-win. Why have we not gone for this? Yeah, if it's, it's too much effort, Pokemon I think a lot of effort is what's needed. Mm-hmm. So we made our case, but I mean, should this be our final thoughts on how the dub? Uh, yeah, I just, what did you guys think yeah. was the best quality of the um, dub in the anime and then the movies respectively? And then where's your low point for each? By TPCI or in general? Uh, uh, all of, uh, considering all 21 seasons, all 21 movies, what was your high point? Like, where did you think the dub was at its best in the anime and in the movies? And then the vice versa, what did you think was at its worst in the anime? So I'll start this one. Sure. Uh, for me, best uh, for the as far as the anime itself goes, the first three seasons. Mm-hmm. For the movies, I would say the last three. Four kids. For Ho- okay, Hoenn, right? The, the, so the, the, the three, the three AG movies and stuff. Mm-hmm. So Jirachi, Deoxys, and Lucario. Yeah. Yeah. Because All right. The Jirachi movie we got, we got uh. Tisa we got, we got half of Chisaki Momo. It I was blown away when I saw the dub when I was 13 years old, and I couldn't believe that they actually let some Japanese singing in. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was, I was in the same position. But I think the reason they kept the song was because it was so important to the story. Yeah. So uh, I'm kind of, um, yeah. Kaori's humming for... Yeah, Veronica Taylor, when it was just made, they, they actually let uh, Kaori's humming go in there. Yeah, they, they left in Kaori's humming. Uh, yeah, so what's your low point for the movies and the anime, respectively? Uh, for the... For the anime, I would yeah. say uh, everything from X Y on. Got For it. the movies, again X Y on. What is your favorite meme? I'll use my trusty frying pan as a drawing. <laughs> <To a dry-pan. laughs> I, I, I had a feeling you'd say that. I had a feeling you'd say that. That or that or I have a flaming Moltres. Hmm. Got it. Um, so uh, who wants to go next? Um, I guess I was going to go next. High point, I would say, like, for the dub in general, would be mm-hmm. um, Lake Canto, Orange Islands for the music. The script was mostly consistent and had the four kids snark, but also had the charm of the voice actors starting to stabilize into their roles. In terms of movie, High Point is movie five. I know it was heavily edited with the dub, but I, I still absolutely appreciate the soundtrack of that movie. I think the actors did amazing conveying that movie. The only thing holding that movie back besides the weird script tent. slash mythos yeah. is that freaking tent. And it is a nitpick, <laughs> but I can't stand seeing Pikachu's Thunderbolt being freaking green. It's weird. <laughs> And it's just when I look at the colors of the yeah. original movie, it's so much more beautiful. Mm-hmm. But uh, how about your low point, respectively? Rachel? Low point what? would be the Sun and Moon dub easily. I barely watch it. I can barely even get myself to watch it. How, how about the I, movies? I, movies X and Y on easily. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, but oh, be- best me. I could use pants. <laughs> 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 I like that it's original. It's not just the same, you know. Uh, Connor, you wanted to go next? Yep. I'll have go to ahead. say um, uh, the answer everyone's been giving. For me, the, the the high point for the anime would have to be like Mid Canto. And I'm not actually going to say like early Hoenn. Mainly because uh, those are the best parts that I have seen of the, got it. Of the anime. And even I love. Love what we did in black and white and diamond and diamond and pearl TV side at some points, just because or other reasons. But I'm really high point, but we do have soft spots, so that's fine. High, uh, what, high what you, point you, and soft yeah. spots. Uh, how about the movies? Uh, the movies, um, movie six easily. That was uh, Jirachi Wishmaker. Yep. Okay. That was not only was that it's just my my favorite Pokemon movies ever. So much thought for me, I. I always love a movie. Mm-hmm. Just the dub was just just awesome. And for uh, all those years, I thought they had a Japanese track. Not, I was fooled. Yeah, they, they they kept everything actually in that one. No, the Japanese track, like the Japanese language track. For all those years, I thought they had it, but they didn't. Right, right, that's true. Yeah. So, I, uh, how about the worst of uh, overall? Did it say for the movies and anime, respectively? Oh, I would have to say Sun and Moon. Got it. Uh, and the movie? And the movies? Oh. Yeah, I'd have to say Sun and Moon. Oh, well, no, specifically, I Choose You from what I've seen. Got mm. it. Um, mainly because mainly of um, what? Of just uh, being just a poor cash grab. Oh, uh, your favorite meme. I forgot. Fair Pokemon meme. I'm going to go with... I'm a flaming Moltres! Right. <laughs> it's still good. I, mean. I guess high point anime seasons would be... 1, 2, and... Hoenn. Mm, it's, interesting. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. But because... Because Kando had the, the, the most nostalgic charm of how an anime feels when you're watching how Pokemon used to be. Some of the soundtracks um, I miss from hearing the first, and we're not all recycled to the old, to the newer seasons that I wish could have been used again, you know. But that's why right. 
that's why one will probably be the most highlight. Two has the best performances and adventure. But personally, my favorite is Hoenn. I like the, the, the quad trio of Ash, May, Max, and Brock. My favorite, mo- my favorite movie is definitely Jirachi. But I have an extreme soft spot for Mewtwo Strikes Back, the first movie. I know that you have gripes on it, but yeah. it it seriously made me cry the second time I saw it in theaters for many reasons of why I have been right, feeling emotional right. for how deteriorating it, the, the show is has become since the end of XYZ now. And, you know, right. and also because of the... Yeah. And also for the personal reasons of a more shipping being a thing and people have been bashing the other girls and everything. So I just okay. had a lot of reasons to see the first movie and it's the rarest time I ever cried. So it's a big deal to me. And also because Mewtwo has a mysterious background of why he was created and did not need that backstory, that dream scene of the Japanese girl dreaming of that, you know? So I just think that the first movie was good on those things. Um, now for the worst... And again, I have I've stopped watching since Diamond and Pearl, but from what I've heard, everything from Battle Frontier all the way. <laughs> That's yes. a, all right. Yeah. That that is a canyon. Yeah. <laughs> Worst movie. I have no comment because I I only saw <laughs> Pokemon Ranger, Ranger. Right. That's right. all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't have a meme either. I. I only know the Flaming Moltres and the Frying Pan one. And I guess my... Okay, no, no, no. My favorite is the... the These donuts are great. Jelly-filled are my favorite. Nothing beats a jelly-filled donut. Pizza jelly oh, filled. shoot. <laughs> I should have that. Oh, God. Um. <laughs> Everyone makes such a big deal about it that I just feel like, you know, this is a special meme and a special trait that they changed for the rice balls to be an inventive that um yeah four kids may have its flaws and its, you know ups and downs but i think generally speaking it's it's a really good dub and i think it's pokemon's best if i have to say if i had to say uh the best voices mm-hmm. i would say to uh to johto to Holland. i think that's where everyone felt more comfortable with their characters uh, especially mm-hmm. for uh, you know team rock and brock I think mm-hmm. they really like like live those roles, and just kind of seeing them get replaced. It's, you know, it was heartbreaking, yeah. mm-hmm. and I, I just knew that like even if TPCI tries, there's no replacing them. Mm-hmm. And um, as for music, I would say Canto uh, through Jodo. I would probably say seasons one through three. Yeah, early Jodo. Yeah, that was seventy two or something. That yeah. Was the last, yeah. Yeah. Since they use a lot of like emotional tracks and right. even tracks that maybe kids might deem as like, oh, it's too sinister or too dark, but I think it's ballsy to kind of use them in like scenes where like it's supposed to be sinister, like for the Sabrina episodes and such. I, um, yeah, I kept a lot actually. Yeah. Um, how, yeah. How, what about what about your worst? Or... Oh, my worst. Uh, well, I would say you know, Battle Frontier was a, was a start, but <laughs> I want to say it's its worst. Uh, Diamond Pro has been all right with me. It has a lot of up, you know, a lot of issues I have with. But right. I think truly for me, I think the downhill started with late season sixteen through season twenty one. Just right now, this is where yeah. like the dub has gone so downhill. All these changes, so censorship, and the in the GG era, it's just <laughs> hammered this entire, like, just the English franchise. Like, like it's just so bad. And, like, I can't even, like, understand, like, how can it just get so bad over a course of 12 years, I remind you. And, like, it's incredible that for uh, four kids of doing way uh, less time than TPCI, they, they've done the best. And like usually you would think, oh, a later dub would be better compared to Ocean to Funimation, but you no, know, yeah. like four kids, they really held the bar so so high. And um, yeah, I I would probably say that's the lowest point. I don't wow. even think I want to continue watching season twenty two in the <laughs> dub, but I would say that's the lowest point. And as for me, 
Yeah. Uh, I would probably say, you know, the flaming mulch. But I do have oh, one. That's one. a good Eric Stewart James impression, I gotta say. <laughs> oh, thanks. I also got <laughs> one meme I think I've started to find really f- funny. This is from season one from Holy Matrimony when James was talking about his backstory, you know. A boy was walking far from home with his loyal growl of growly. <laughs> <laughs> And just that how like is a good area. far from home with his loyal growl of growly, and just, <laughs> and just how like that actually is a good Eric Stewart impression. I gotta say. Oh, thank you. Uh, I kind of hope to do maybe like voice impressions, uh, voice impressions video. Mm-hmm. And I just love just the fact that how serious James took it, and just without realizing that no, it's a it's a silly <laughs> backstory. He, he's still alive. <laughs> Just, oh yes, that's right. And then <laughs> I can't I believe James is actually gone. <laughs> yeah, it's just I miss I, him. I really appreciate the uh, the weirdness and just how well they handled such a flashback, despite being like. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, my I think the best season for me was um the Orange Island series uh, and a little bit of the Hoenn series too. Too. I, I know we talked about how James had a different voice. Well, I mean, it was right. same actor. He just pulled it off a yeah. little different. different mm-hmm. But, you know, either way, mm-hmm. um, you know. Uh, but, yeah, that to me that was where they found the characters. They got used to it. Right? And they said, this is what we want to do. Boom, you know. Um, as for music, I think the music was best. Um, I want to say in the Canto re- in Indigo League. Because right. I mean that's just memorable for us. Uh, so I it. can't believe I can't believe movie twenty got rid of it. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, how about your worst? Worst dub. Um, obviously X Y X Y Z and the Sun and Moon series. Mm-hmm. I mean that's when that's when just everything went downhill. Our expectations <laughs> from the black and white series. You know, mm-hmm. of, oh, this is going to yeah. be, this is actually getting better, is actually going, or is actually going down, down, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's a big shocker, kind of, not really. But, uh, uh, what's your favorite meme, I guess? Favorite meme? Um, it's the what? It's the scene from uh, the St. Anne where Jesse and James are on the ship, and James is like, haha, you all laughed at me, but this time, uh, and... James is like, haha, you all laughed at me, but this time uh, they got us a way out, and it's a magic carp, and they tie themselves yeah. to the magic carp. They tie themselves yeah. to the magic carp. He's like, okay, yes. magic carp, let's go, let's go. And then the magic carp is just like splashing, and they're just still there. Yeah. <laughs> Has everyone gone? Uh, no, you're, you're the last one. You watch her. Yeah, yeah, the last right. one. Okay, so my high point with the anime would be I thought the actors took about 10 to 15 episodes to get into it. From mid to canto ish to the end of early Jodo, my favorite part of the anime. So um, from mid season one to season three. Uh, as far as the movies go, uh, I'm actually going to say movie six to eight. Um, I was actually really impressed. You know, for four kids, I would have expected a cut or a censor or the music change, but they kept the Jap- almost all the Japanese music or all of it. In yeah. those three movies, um, the scripts were actually mostly pretty good. Um I like the voice acting. Um, I especially like the in the Lucario movie when Ash is inside the tree and uh, he's talking to Lucario about he, you know, it can't leave, it can't stay. And then when he's like, you know, and when the, another scene where Veronica Taylor was crying as Ash when he was apologizing to Lucario, Delasso said it sounds horrible. I disagree, on it, but. Um, uh, so I really like Veronica Taylor's performance as Ash in her last movie a lot. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I do too. I don't think I said and, that. Uh, yeah. yeah, besides the Pasta La Vista, which is a filler episode, so I just I like to treat the Lucario movie as the last thing they did, even though 
technically it's that episode, but you know. Um your worst. Uh honestly X Lion Sun and Moon. Um yeah. be, be it the anime or the movies or the Pikachu shorts. This is just I'm so disappointed. Like we have music replacements in everything. That's just one problem. The script translation is very inconsistent. Even when they're accurate, Jimmy James Carter Cathcart manages to write in a way that it doesn't sound like very natural. And then when he mistranslates things, it, it sounds goofy. I mean, potions to lotions and the wine cups to oranges glasses. I'm speechless at that. You know, and Sun and Moon stuff. But if I had to pick the absolute worst part of the anime dub, it's Sun and Moon so far for me. Yeah. Um, uh, movies, um, Hoopa and the Class of Ages was the objective worst. Hoopa. Um, the Cringe of Ages, as Antoine says, but um, <laughs> I the the one that made most was like a knife in the back was I Choose You, and that, that has, has to do with that casting, and the, that has to just do with them, the company, not the actors, writers, and it, just because they couldn't even bother to keep all the Japanese music for the 20th anniversary movie. They couldn't bother to keep all the script translated well, all of it. And they couldn't bother to at least improve the voice acting to a point where I, I would have thought that, okay, yeah, it's as good as what it, it wasn't as good as the original. Yeah. Um, so so I would say objectively, who the Clash of Ages is probably the worst, but subjectively I was more, you know, Upset about I choose you for a couple of reasons. Um, that seems like a fair statement. Yeah. Yeah, I'd agree. And um, uh, meme. Uh, everyone said flaming Moltres, uh, drying pan. I like those two. Um, I like a Pokemon paparazzi episode with Snap, where which is voiced by James Carter Cath, Carter coincidentally, but hot Snap. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where yeah. um he says my camera is my. And Ash says, go get yourself a new life. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that yeah. part so good. Another thing, I miss four kids is like snappy remarks. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, I miss, Ash thing. I, I miss, miss that, that snark. I really do. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. it, it, it never strayed too, too far away from the original script. It was just enough to be. This was our longest podcast. Yeah, Please, so yeah, I, have, yeah, I never said my favorite yeah. movie. I mean, when you're when you're covering oh, fans, you 21 years of a four show. Four fans, four fans, four fans. Favorite movie. Sorry, go ahead. Four fans. Go ahead. Okay, favorite movie. Uh, real quick, Destiny Deoxys. Four kids. Um, you know, it's a real great movie. Definitely. Um, I love the futuristic looking city. Mm -hmm. I love the Rayquaza versus Deoxys, and I freaking nerd out, nerded out when they had Rayquaza versus Deoxys and. Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. Fire. That was an awesome reference. Right. Yeah, well, that was great. Yeah. I don't, th I don't think I've said my first favorite movies. Oh, you can keep continuing. You can go oh, ahead, yeah. Anton. Or, or, yeah, you, uh, four fans, do you have anything else to add? Oh, yeah. Least favorite movie. I'm trying to remember the last TPCI movie I saw. Because I kind of did like Volcania a little bit. I mean, it's not mm -hmm. a favorite, but it's definitely above the rest of what we have. Volcania. Yeah. A Hoopa? Hoopa, yeah. Hoopa would be a good choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah sir, I guess Hoopa would be a good one because in the trailer they promised that Arceus was going to show up um, since they're showing out all the other legends and Arceus oh. doesn't even show up at all. He <laughs> shows up at the, for like one minute to be like, I'm God. Bye. He doesn't even say anything. He's in the sky randomly at the end like with the crater. Yeah. Yeah, it was weird. Yeah. yeah. Oh God! Speaking of hoop, I'm just gonna bring this up now. Grip. The, the, I'm sure this is a W, right? Ale Hooper ring. Oh. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think that was. That is a. A dub adaptation. That definitely doesn't sound like Japanese script to me. Uh, no. No. Pokemon Mister. Um. So, uh, Antoine, you wanted to add? Yeah. Um. Uh. So I would say for favorite movies. Um, I want to say uh, five through eight for four kids, and this might uh, might be a unpopular uh, topic, but I I would say movie three is one of my more favorites. 
I just love the story and uh, the characters. I've kind of seen a cult following. It's, it's a good choice. Yeah, it's a it's good a, choice. It's actually a popular one. It's actually a popular one. A lot of people. Yeah. It's Battle of the Unknown, and a lot of people liked it. So. Especially Jim Green as Ente. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, oh, it's. Yeah. Um, I think right, Anthony's so... gone, so um, I'll mention his channel when he comes. What since he left? Okay. But um, go ahead. Uh, for fans, you can end this off first. Okay. All right. So. Mm. So thank you for joining us for this podcast. It's been quite a ride for this this episode. We've been here for quite a few hours. <laughs> to anyone, to anyone yeah. who made it from part one to all the way here, good job. You deserve a cookie. <laughs> Our condolences. <laughs> what a drag. That, that requires a lot of patience. What a drag. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a drag, isn't it? <laughs> yeah um, anyway um you know uh you guys plug in your channels we'll leave a li- link in this this i'm sorry we'll li- leave a link in the description down below below for them for everyone to find him find him i can even his if you want uh, i can get rid of mine and his so you guys can all so all right. anthony's channel is uh, for um anthony ford on youtube uh he has uh, Different kinds of videos, so like on Two and a Half Man, on Pokemon. He has voice compares. He has a, what his thoughts were on each voice actor over the years and each season, movie. Whatever. He does track movie reviews. He does um, that kind of things of those, that nature. Different kind, of, different content, sitcoms, yes. that kind of stuff. Um, and movies. And uh, my channel is PKMN Voice Compares. Same, similar to Anthony, except I just use clips and put them together. Just so you guys, mm-hmm. just so people can th- choose which one they like more, why, whatever. Um, I, I think that's it for me and Anthony. So you guys can go ahead. Uh, special guest Jolteon Jordan, you can go first. All right, thank you. Um, you can, you guys can find me on my YouTube channel, Jolteon Jordan. It's one word. Jordan is spelled with an A. And you can also find my Twitter accounts, my Twitter and Facebook accounts, same name. Um, I typically do video game reviews as well as some editorials on other geek topics. Um, like I did one on Movie 20 before it came out in the U.S. And I also do other topics on video games regarding that. So if you're just interested in games, I usually lean towards Nintendo properties, but I do have some go with some others as well. Uh, come see my channel. Maybe you'll be entertained. All right. All right. Uh, Johnny, how about you? My YouTube channel is Johnny the Whiz Kid. I'm a reviewer. My first review was Godzilla 1998, my counter review against the Nostalgia Critics complaint on it. It has two parts, and I spent five years making it. I hope you learn something from it. Um, right now, I just finished a game, and I don't know when I'll ever get to it, but I've been working on a review, so it's still taking me a while. But if you subscribe and patient enough, just wait till I um, announce my next review. But Overall, just um, thank you for subscribing to me. And if you're interested, go ahead and hope hope you hear from me soon. All righty. Uh, Antoine Kudo, how about you? Yeah. A N T W O N K U D O. I post occasional cartoon reviews. I also post Pokemon related content. I have a fun little uh, Brock's Paradise video with Eric Stewart's voice. Uh, so definitely uh, check that out. And yeah. And Connor, Connor. Subscribe to me, Blue Hawk TV. I do music. And I'm also have um, a other channel, Blue Hawk Extras, that I'm going to try to use for um, uh, other geek stuff. And um, I'm also right now currently working on two audiobooks. And one's almost finished. So I'm just look up, looking up on Amazon.com. Some point C O N N O R space T E R E L L, and you'll find whatever I'm narrating, and you also find I'm song on at on that site as well. You gotta search somewhere that's also on iTunes and wherever else you buy your music. 
and I also have Reverb Nation page, ReverbNation.com slash Connor Terrell, and a Facebook page, Facebook.com slash Connor Terrell Official, and it should also help you read redirect you to my gaming page, not my, my former gaming page, now it's just general geeking, whatever, and that's, I can't remember what that link to that is called, but the name of it is Connor Terrell, Connor Terrell Gaming and General Geekery is something like that. All right. Uh, Oshawa, you got a channel. I could not hear anything. Oh, sorry. Oshawa, do you have a channel? Um, I do, but I don't really post a lot. But when I do, it's like little fun projects that I work on. Like right now, it's... I'm uh, syncing clips of the old Saban Digimon dub with the Japanese soundtrack. It's actually quite cool. cool. Oh, um, um, yeah. Uh, so let's see. I don't, and I don't even remember the link to my own YouTube channel because I don't really use it all that much. So I can. So let's see. So in, for this chat, I will post it in in the uh, link and or in the text box. But I'm I'm more active on Twitter. You can follow uh, you can follow me there. Uh, my Twitter handle is at Oshawat five thousand one because five hundred one was, taken, and <laughs> I was not happy about that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and then what else do I have that is of interest? Um, about it. I I I mean. I don't have like a fan page for Facebook or anything, just a personal one. And well, yeah. So, I'm a, and I'm a, I will say this speak, go back to movies. I mentioned that I've only watched up to movie six. Well, I think during his break, I might take a moment to watch movies seven through 20. So, I'll do, on that note, we're going to get out of here. It was nice talking to you guys. So, nice yeah. getting to acquainted with all nice. you guys. Nice to talk to you, too. Guys. Yeah. So until you, next time, you're see, you guys it, so. see you guys later. See you guys later. See you. See you. Later.